Come on up. All right, he's going to catch me if I pass out. <laughs> <laughs> he's got I'll catch it on camera. <laughs> No, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your scholarship program. I know that's okay. near and dear to your heart and uh, yes. what you kind of do for people in that situation. Sure. Um, so if you aren't familiar with my scholarship program, since I work for myself, I get to charge the rates that I want to be paid. So if people would like to give me gratuity, then I put that into a scholarship fund. And on my website, I have an application. So people who need massage and who just can't afford it can go to my website, they can click on the application, complete that, and then as funds become available in the scholarship fund, I'll, con I'll contact those people, and I do partial and full. So maybe some people, you know, they can pay some for a massage, but not the full amount. So um, I can help them come in with whatever their budget um, is. So if you have friends or loved ones who need massage, who are going through a difficult time, stressful time in their um, life, and just need to relax and um, reconnect, then send them to my website. I'd love to work with you. Great. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I, I, I'm not going to apologize for my southern accent. I was home last week and loved it. And I'm firmly convinced that it was because of my um, my being in Orange County that the Tar Hills took the championship. So, we got to stay up late and, and cheer our boys on. So, I um, wanted to just introduce you to my family. On the left, um, this is my husband, Frank, and my two boys who love hiking and enjoying all the outdoor activities that Colorado has to offer. And then on the right at the bottom, this is my oldest, Renee. She's a freshman at, UN, at um, NC State in Raleigh, North Carolina. So this was actually, um, last week we got to have a sleepover with her in her apartment, so that was lots of fun, and the boys love connecting um, with that. So this month, or in March, I celebrated 20 years of healing. I went to, thank you, yeah. I went to massage school right out of high school, and I firmly believe that touch is a gift. And so I compare it to playing music. People can take music lessons and they can learn to play a song on the piano, but it takes a really gifted person to be a musician and to sit down and create music. And so I really feel like my passion toward healing and working with people is just working with their body and, and just going on a journey with it to relaxation and healing. So um, I was nationally board certified massage and body work therapist. And I'm licensed in North Carolina as well as Colorado, and, um, and I'm a member of two of the massage therapy associations. Um, I wanted to share with you all a little bit about what we learn in school. Because um, many of you wonder, just like, what do they do all day? They just like rub their feet and relax? Or, you know, what do they learn? So um, my program was 650 hours, and you can see um, the concentration was in anatomy and physiology. And we learned different types of uh, massage modalities. We also learned um, something like communication, how to have good boundaries with your clients. Uh, we work in an intimate setting with someone. So trust and boundaries are very, very important. Um, I also learned sports <coughs> massage. Um, and then somatic awareness. Somatic me is just, it's a word that means uh, mind. So when you have your eyes closed, you can kind of sense someone coming in your space without seeing them. And so that's really important for a massage therapist to understand is, um, is all the ways that we give feedback to our client on the table. So having clear intentions of the work that we're doing. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to you know, cook for dinner or things like that. I'm just holding that sacred space, being with you in that moment and what your needs are. So um, a lot of schools nowadays tend to be really heavy on the... Um, neuromuscular side or some of the manual therapy sides of, of things and I feel like they're really missing out on all that we can do. So for me, um, I've had a, um, a broad experience. I worked with some athletes at the University of Chapel Hill soccer team in 2000. I worked in a medical office setting, I worked in a fitness center, I worked in a spa. Um, when we moved back to North Carolina, I was the lead therapist at Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa. And one of my favorite parts of that job was I got paid to receive massage. So people <laughs> said it was like the best job ever. So people, new candidates for hire would come in and perform their hands-on um, portion of their uh, interview on me. I would evaluate them. And then as we had new therapists come into the group, then I got the chance to mentor them. I got to teach them how to do hot stone massage and just really help to pass back the knowledge that I have as a more experienced therapist with the newer ones coming along, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, when we moved here, when we moved back here in July, I was just really itching to do my own thing again, and so in November, I opened up 
my office off of North Union Boulevard. And for um, 16 years, my or 17 years, my business was called Touch of Carolina Therapeutic Massage. So I renamed it Holistic Healing Experiences. And the reason for that is that um, and at the different um, continuing education that I've taken since I got out of massage school, I've learned hot stone massage, I've learned a technique called myoskeletal alignment, which is one of my favorites. And um, then I also learned to do some kinesiology taping like Dr. White um, talked about a few weeks ago, um, some neck pain, soft tissue techniques, and I've learned a technique called quant quantum crystalline energy healing. And so it really just kind of works with that emotional level. You know, sometimes when you've just had a rough day and things feel chaotic, you just don't feel right in your body, you know? But then some days the sun's shining, life's good, you know, you kind of feel good. So this is a technique through touch that really just kind of helps to bring balance back to that energy. So if, you, if people have gone through a crisis in their life, a divorce or some other emotional crisis, then this is a really amazing technique that just gives them an opportunity to reconnect and to kind of find that inner peace again. So um, I love following up and staying educated. I'm a researcher by heart. So every month I look forward to getting my, um, my massage therapy journal, my trade journals. And every year we have a, um, I think it was like the fourth or fifth year, there's a, um, a San Diego Pain Summit. So researchers and doctors, physical therapists, um, manual therapists come together and they just share the latest that they're learning about brain, how we process, um, or about pain and how the brain processes pain. So I love keeping up to date on that. And then also very new on the horizon, we didn't have all this technology and tools to measure the body and measure results in the body um, when I first got out of massage school. So it's been really fun to kind of fall, ride the wave. And as things change with what we're learning, we, we're learning that you know what, deep tissue and deep pressure is not very effective for your body. So when you have, um, like knots in your shoulder blade here and it feels really really good for somebody to just put pressure put an elbow there well it's just like if i put a paper clip on my ear it's gonna hurt or a, a clothespin on my ear it's gonna hurt really bad for about a minute and a half after that my brain's gonna ignore it because it's like it's just it's just a clothespin it's not hurting you you're okay so you ignore it you you centralize the pain so when you have therapists doing deep pressure on those areas that hurt they're not really making the areas um, go away or they're not really treating the root cause of that it just centralizes the pain so you don't hurt for a few days but then it comes back so my favorite thing I tell clients is you know when they start trying to tell me what they want for their massage and what kind of pressure I said well you know your other therapist did that but your pain came back didn't it yep well would you like to try something new okay so and then I'd have a, a new fan club member for life so um, this is one of the, um, just a couple little screenshots from one of my favorite articles recently. And it's funny, as I was preparing for this, um, I actually had a client this morning who came in with this issue. So um, short leg syndrome kind of creates some different imbalances in your body and your body, um, you always want to keep your eye, your body in your brain is going to keep your eyes level with the horizon. So if your hips are crooked, then that's going to kind of create an S, an S curve going up the body. It creates problems in your feet and your arches, so it's important for the therapist to not just work your neck. So my client today came in with neck pain, but we worked the root problem, so we worked from the feet up. So I worked, did some things on her um, ankles and her feet, and you'll see here, um, this, this shows you the difference in hips. So usually people have um, a little rotation in the hips, so one might be higher, or one might be turn forward and there's different techniques that I can do to bring balance to the hips, balance to the sacrum. So the goal is to um, give clients a level sacral base. So your spine is sitting on, you know, on your sacrum and if your sacrum is twisted, your spine has to compensate for that. So a lot of people have you know, pain on just that one side, right? Or it feels good to cross your legs because the, it, it feels good for that hip um, twist. So a lot of what I do is just is straighten up hips. And you can see in this picture here, this is a, a really good example of areas where this person who has the leg length um, uh, sh or shorter leg syndrome is going to experience pain. So um, I'm not just, again, I'm not just going to work on that part that you're complaining about. We're going to look at the whole picture and treat the whole picture. And so this is just another picture as well. So we call this functional scoliosis. Some people um, may look like that and they can play ball and they can be active and they don't experience pain and that's great. But when they do, it's important to come in and see someone like me 
that does some manual therapy techniques to help them um, help them prevent injury and um, compensating patterns. And that's just another picture without the without the skin. So again, my name for my business is Holistic Healing Experiences. So I touch a little bit of these three areas every time I have a client on the table. So people may come in just for knee pain, but they're gonna get so much more that um, sometimes it's hard to put into words. Just, um, I like to call it creating that safe place for people. So, um, treating, again, treating the body, looking at patterns, um, feeling for limited movement and treating that. I uh, had a client come in with low back pain. He wanted to be able to run and do kickboxing classes again. He tried a lot of other therapies. We did some of these techniques, and he was pain-free in three sessions. Okay, is that the end of my turn? Yeah. Or is that the okay, all right. So um, if you have um, people who could benefit from uh, managing their stress or pain, feel free to send them my way into my website, and they can schedule online. Thank you so much.